Hey my friend, welcome back to yet another video inside of our exciting series going through the Old Testament tabernacle of Moses. Now in this video, we're gonna take another step forward as we approach the most holy place where the presence of God was said to dwell. Now, if you click off of this video, I'm just gonna tell you, you are going to miss out my friend because in this video, I'm gonna talk about seven different ways that you can get answers to your prayers. I mean, at the end of the day, don't we all want to get our prayers answered? So we are going to take a look at the piece of furniture that was located directly outside of the most holy place, which is called the altar of incense. And so I'm gonna take you on a 3D tour going through the holy place to this altar of incense. I'm gonna describe the symbolism and the significance of what was happening there, but then we're gonna analyze this and we're gonna give you seven ways or seven things to consider to get answers to your prayers. Okay, so every morning and every evening, the priests would come and they would burn four different types of spices on this altar of incense, which was once again, uh, located directly outside of the most holy place, which we will finish our series next um, video. But essentially, they would burn this incense on this altar and the incense as it ascended to the Lord represented the prayers of God's people ascending to God in heaven. So this was the significance of the altar of incense. It represented the prayers of the people ascending to heaven. Okay, let's jump right in. Not gonna waste your time today. Now, the first thing that I want to observe here is the placement of this altar in relation to the Ark of the Covenant, which was located in the most holy place. Notice that this piece of furniture was the closest piece of furniture to the presence of God, which I believe is symbolic of the fact that we are closest to God when we commune with our Father in prayer. So I confess to you that prayer is an area of weakness for me. I typically rush through my prayer so I can get to the word of God. And so this is a very convicting message for me. So I'm gonna jump right in. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves if we want to get answers to our prayers is, am I praying in faith? In other words, am I just praying, but in the back of my mind, I don't really believe that God is able to really do what it is that I'm asking him to do, or am I praying with faith, believing and trusting that God who's in heaven can do it for me? Now, I'm gonna give you so many scriptures in this video that I really want you to really meditate on, embrace and marinate in your spirit so that you can really get this, okay? So the first one is in James chapter one. It says, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. So obviously we see right away that our faith is a key component to getting answers to our prayers. Not the only component, but it is a key component. Let's keep going. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is what? Able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We serve a God who's able to do far more than what we could ever even ask or think. That's why it says we need to offer our prayers in faith. Hebrews eleven six, one of my favorite. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists. Okay, yeah, I believe he exists. But do we believe this? and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So the first question that I really want you to ask yourself, if you're really trying to get answers to your prayers, is am I offering my prayer in faith? Or in the back of my mind, I don't really trust God and don't believe he's gonna do it. I'm just praying to say that I pray today. Now, the second question that we really need to ask is, are my prayers preceded by confession? Now, this is important because if you remember, 
before the priests were able to go into the holy place, they had to stop at the laver to wash their hands and their feet, implication that they couldn't just go into the presence of God with a dirty and filthy, uh, dirty and filthy hands. They had to cleanse themselves first if they ever wanted to experience the Shekinah glory or the presence of God. My friend, in the same way, one of the main reasons why we may not be getting answers to our prayers is because God may not even be hearing our prayers because when we offer our prayers to the Lord, our hearts are not cleansed before him. Notice Psalm 66, 18. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Confession is a prerequisite for getting our prayers answered. Now, Hebrews 10, 22, it says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. There's step one. You must have faith. And now here it is. Having our hearts sprinkled from a what? An evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I don't know about you, but are you just seeing the symbolism going all over the place? Like sprinkled, right? As they sprinkled the blood on the altar of, in, of, of a sacrifice. And then our bodies being washed with pure water, that's representative of the labor, right? Like it's all tying together. The point here is that we have to have a clean heart as we come to God in prayer. Question number three is, are my prayers offered with passion? All right, check this out. He, uh, James 5 says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent Prayer of a righteous man avails much. Whenever you pray, are you just going through the motions or are you really putting your heart into your prayers? Are you really putting passion in your prayers? Are you really praying with power and conviction in your prayers? That is what moves the heart of God, not just simply going through the motions. Now, question number four is, are your prayers with the right motive. My friend, you're going to love the symbolism right here. Trust me. Okay. So here's the idea. Are my prayers consistent with the will of God and the word of God? One of the main reasons why many of us are not getting the answers to our prayers is because our prayers are much more self-centered for our own motives rather than the motives of God. Notice what Exodus 30 and 9 says. These priests were given specific instructions not to offer any strange fire on the altar of incense. Notice it says here, do not offer any unholy incense on this altar or any burnt offerings, grain offerings, or liquid offerings. This strange fire represents prayers that were not consistent with um, with God's will. Strange fire means it, it, the incense was contaminated or mixed with something that it shouldn't be mixed with. It was impure, right? In the same way, our prayers can't be mixed with our own motives and what we want to have happen, but they have to be pure in terms of what God wants to see happen in the kingdom. Oh, but it gets deeper. Notice what Exodus 30, 37 and 38 says. You're going to love this. It says, never use this formula to make this incense for yourselves. It is reserved for the Lord and you must treat it as holy. Anyone who makes incense like this for personal use will be cut off from the community. Do you see this? God is saying this incense that I'm giving you to pray with is not for you. It's not for your personal use. It's not for you to advance your own agenda. It's for the Lord. God took this so seriously that when Aaron, even Aaron, the priest, his sons offered impure, strange fire on the altar, they were consumed. Notice it says here, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way, 
they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire. Then it goes on to say, so fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up and they died there before the Lord. Let me give you an example of how this plays out just to make it really practical. Let's say you're single and you're praying. You're saying, Lord, I want to be married. But your motive is primarily because you're lonely, you want children, and you want to have guilt-free sex. That's your main motive, right? The proper motive should be, God, please bless me with a life partner so that I can accomplish your will and your purpose for my life much better as a married man or woman than I ever would be able to do as a single man or woman. Do you see the difference? The motive is first and foremost, God, I want to accomplish your, your work and your motive, or excuse me, your agenda more than just my own happiness. So we have to ask the question, are my prayers offered with the right motive? James 4.3 says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So once again, check your motives before you pray. Question number five, are my prayers specific? Now, what I mean here is this. Let's say you have somebody that they ask you to pray for them and you because they need uh, healing or something like that. They're sick, they're going to the hospital. And you say, okay, God, please heal my brother or sister in Jesus' name, amen. Now, that's a very general prayer. But you could pray and say, God, I pray that as my brother or sister goes into surgery today, that you would give the doctor skill. I pray that you would you would bless their hands to operate. I pray that they would remove whatever sickness is going on in my brother or sister's body. I pray, God, that you would give all the nurses care and skill to care for my brother and, or sister. God, I pray that even as they come out of the surgery, that you would heal them and you would bless them with a full and quick recovery. God, I pray that you would surround them with brothers and sisters and family members and neighbors who will be able to minister to them and provide every need so that they can make a quick recovery. So you see the difference between general prayers and specific prayers. This might be a reason why we're not getting our prayers answered. Oh, number six is a good one. Are my prayers more me-centered or others-centered? In other words, am I praying more for myself or spending more time praying for others? Let me break it down to you another way. If God answered all of your prayers, would the world be changed or would just your world be changed? There's a big difference. You see, the priest's ministry was largely a ministry of intercessory prayer, which we're going to see in a moment, was typified and fulfilled by Jesus Christ. You see, a prophet was to speak to the people on behalf of God. But a priest was supposed to speak to God on behalf of the people. You and I are priests before the Lord, which means we are to spend quite a bit of time in prayer speaking to God on behalf of people. This is what Jesus does for us on a consistent basis. Hebrews says, therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on whose behalf? Our behalf. Let me give you another scripture. I told you I'm gonna pack you in today with scripture. I want you to meditate on these scriptures. Hebrews 9 and 24 says, For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. Let me just stop right there before we even move forward. Do you see what the author of Hebrews is saying? He is saying that the earthly tabernacle that you and I have been studying over these past several videos is nothing more than a copy of the heavenly sanctuary that Christ enters into to make intercession for you and I. It was all a foreshadowing and symbolic. Now, it says here, he, speaking of Jesus, 
entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. The ministry of Christ is to intercede on our behalf. Why? Because we have a high priest that was tempted and tried in all things and yet without sin. Because, so he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, the Bible says. So my question to you is, are you spending more time praying for yourself or are you praying for others? And the last question that I really want you to ask is, are my prayers consistent? What I mean here is many of us treat God like a spare tire. We don't think about him until something goes wrong and we need him or we need something from him. The Bible teaches that we should make our prayers consistent. Notice as we look at the altar of incense, it says here, every morning when Aaron maintains the lamps, he must burn fragrant incense on the altar. And each evening when he lights the lamps, he must again burn incense in the Lord's presence. This must be done from generation to generation. Now, fast forward to the New Testament. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians that we are to pray without ceasing. We don't just have to reserve our prayers for the morning and the evening. We should be in constant communication and fellowship with God in prayer throughout the day, whether that's thanking him, whether that's confessing our sin, whether that's praying for somebody who asks us to pray for them, whether that's just worshiping God, whether that's asking him for guidance and wisdom as we go about our day through the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us, we should be in consistent communication with the Lord, not just waiting for when we need something from him. So my friend, there are seven things that I really want you to consider in terms of whether or not you are getting regular answers to prayer. And we looked at these seven things through the lens of the altar of incense, which was located right outside of the most holy place. Now, in the next video, it's our final video in this series. And we are going to look at the veil that separated the most holy place from the holy place. And we are going to enter into the presence of God and we're gonna look at the Ark of the Covenant. It's gonna be a great finale. Hopefully you'll join me in that video. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.